Do you think we'll see more variety in decks in top eights? Ruby Amphis in itself looks a little different than it was before. There's no precedent for how you respond to them. When someone plays one against you, you're like, okay, so what do I do? This is so new. It's such an entirely new way to play the game. With all the locations and the new interactions that you'll be getting and the variety of decks that you'll see. Figure out an Ultra Megatonic meta discard. That would be scary for me because I don't think it's fun to play against. Oh, uh, look on it, girl! Yeah, how's it going, everyone? My name is Sarl Meister, and this is the Lore Meisters Podcast. Today's episode is an ultra megatonic bonus one because today we will be doing our first IRL podcast with fellow creators from the Disney Lorcana community. And that is Lorcana Villain, Lorcana Decklist, and Pavel. Set three is finally here. So I traveled from Scotland all the way to London so I can celebrate the release of Into the Inklands. We started the day in a line for three hours at the Disney store in London where there were so many people to get the promo card Scrooge McDuck and also got a chance to meet one one of the art directors slash artists for Disney Lorcana, Giulia Riva, whom I got the chance to chat with and got my card signed. We then headed to some local game stores to pick up some more products and ended up in Dark Sphere where we played some sealed events. On the second day of the weekend, we all got together and big thanks to Dark Sphere for reserving us a table despite having hundreds of people in the store just so we can bring this ultra megatonic podcast episode for the Disney Lorcana community. How's it going, everyone? We are here in London today for set three release. Well, yesterday was the set three release. This is day two already. We're having so much fun. There's so many people here uh, playing different card games. But for today, we're going to be focusing on set three Lorcana into the Inklands. Um, we have a lot of uh, guests here, a bunch of creators from uh, from this and Lorcana. You guys want to you guys want to uh, introduce yourselves real quick? <laughs> my name is Baker, and I, my YouTube channel is Lorcana Villain. <laughs> uh, hi, uh, I'm Steve. I'm known as LD Online. You might know me as Lorcana Decklist on Twitter and on Pixelboard. Yeah. Hey guys, so I'm Pavel, and I'm a software developer who loves Lorcana. <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> all right, um, I'm, I'm going to get into uh, set three right away. All right, let 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 because. Um, it's, it's so exciting. We finally have the first three set that they planned making together, right? They didn't do it at the same time, but it was all planned together. And now we're seeing what they actually was thinking when they made the game. Because there, there was a lot of questions after like set one, where are these, where are that, set two, where are these, where are that? And I think it's finally here. What are you guys looking out for uh, or worried about um, when it comes to facing a deck? Like what, what deck are you like threatened the most? Uh, well, we all know that Ruby Amethyst has had a chokehold on the meta for two seasons now. It doesn't look like it's getting any worse. Um, it does look like that a couple more decks might be able to withstand the test of Ru the Ruby Amethyst test, basically. Um, and I do think we'll see more the variety in decks in top eights. Um, Ruby Amethyst in itself looks a little different than it was before, but new, like Emerald just got so much better. Um, yeah. Like I think Emerald is going to be a real star color for this season just because uh, like Ursula in its own, like we could talk about so many cards, but if you just think about three drop Ursula, even two drop Ursula, but three drop Ursula in particular, yeah. it's what I call value. So yeah, I, I'm excited to see some Emeralds. Like it was very underused or, or underperformed, should I say, in uh, top cuts. So, we have Inkables now. Yes, it has some Inkables, rejoice. <laughs> so no, I'm looking forward to seeing what Emerald can do this season. What about you, Lurk on the deck list? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, were you were saying, like, what, what worries you? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, what are you looking out for? What, yeah. what makes you feel threatened? Yeah, so if you want to talk about me feeling threatened, the first time that your opponent resolves, like, a queen's castle on board, <laughs> uh, any, 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 of, <laughs> any of the good locations, so queen's castle, RLS legacy, some of these, um, yeah, there's a few out there. There's no, there's no precedent for how you respond to them. When someone plays one against you, you're like, okay, so what do I do? This is so new. It's such an entirely new way to play the game. So massive threat, especially when people aren't used to dealing with them. And really those decks, there's going to be a lot of decks out there that make good use of them. We've seen the Beast Bayou combo. That's a really cool use to be at location. Yeah. Like you were saying, Ruby Amethyst gains Queen's Castle. Some others, plenty of people playing Jim Hawkins <laughs> to make the deck even more powerful, I suppose. But uh, yeah, really working out how to play with those is 
the day one threat to me. I need to know how to work against them, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about you, Pavel? Well, yeah, I'm very, very excited because we are entering a set where you cannot just take your existing deck and upgrade it because things work in a completely different way now. We have a lot of new depth to the game, a lot of new situations you need to resolve. So I think it's a fresh... Some, I feel it's a fresh start for the game. Like It feels like a new beginning with all the locations and the new interactions that you'll be getting and the variety of decks that you'll see. And I expect that the meta will not be resolved in two, three, four weeks as it happens with previous sets. It will take a lot more time for people to adjust to locations, how they work and how to add them to most of them, more efficiently to their decks and handle them. So I'm very excited to see that whole thing resolve over time. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm scared of this card in general. Um, I, I feel like if they uh, figure out an ultra megatonic meta discard, that would be scary for me because I don't think it's fun to play against. It, it, you can have fun playing it, but not fun to play against. And for me, that's like a, 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 a big threat um, to the meta. And uh, also something that was a threat for me, but at the same time I'm okay with is splashing this card here and there. Like um, I've seen your uh, list with uh, yellow, green, right? Emerald, uh, Amber, and you're running some Ursula's and Bear Necessities, but it's not a full discard deck, but you have enough discard to disrupt the opponent's plan, and, and I like that. Yeah, totally, and it's, so it's like you say, it's this sort of B plan of, you'll see it emerge a lot more with these decks now, and it's the same sort of principle I'm following. I've, I've been playing a lot of Emerald Amethyst, a tempo deck, um, and when you're playing aggressive characters like Cursed Merfolk and Flynn, the, the two-drop Flynn Rider, where they have to discard a card when they trade in, yeah. um, you end up putting pressure on their hand as well as the board, and you're these two law threats. Of, you know, they function like Lilos, but then you're also discarding cards. And you're sort of like, well, I have to deal with it, but I can't. But I have to. But I can't. Yeah, they get chill. <laughs> yeah, look, there is no chill, and then they play a location behind it, and they're like, oh, well, there's a lot of things going on. Um, but um, yeah, just you get to have that pressure just sort of innately there in these decks without committing too much in the way of how you build the deck. And it can force them to be like playing unoptimally just for the sake of I would rather just play these cards out of my hand than lose the ball. Because that's the thing with this card, like you say, like it's it's a thing where no one likes to be losing. Like that's not a, a hot a hot take. But not even being allowed to play the game, yeah. that's what is soul destroying. Just no hand draw, in, uninkable, great pass. Like that that can be soul destroying. So yeah, I agree. The lucky discard is gonna be another menace. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so we're gonna get into what are we gonna be playing. Like, uh, I I'll start this uh, off real quick. Like, I'm an aggro player, and finally, cards or, or colors that has aggro on them, green in particular, yellow as well has uh, aggro on them. There's finally answer for us um, against steel because steel fully shut us down. And as a result, we have a control meta deck that's not threatened by any aggro decks at all. Uh, and, and that sucks, right? Like, uh, uh, that sucks. But we, now we can target the songs and say, hey, you can no longer grab your swords, me. If you want, you can remove one one thing at a time, but not everything on uh, my board. So that's what I'm excited about for aggro players out there who, who who's uh, been waiting to show off their decks. This might be our, our, our time to finally join the meta. I don't know if we're going to dominate, but we're definitely going to join the game. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so uh, day one pick for me after a little bit of testing is uh, Ruby Mufasa. I think that that's a super resilient deck that was really good before and just gets way better. Um, like you were just saying, those those cards that aggro and basically every other deck will use to take removal spells, take songs away. And you get it, to see the hands. You get to see the hand. It, it's fantastic. And, and in Mufasa, you get to play bare necessities if you want if you want to do that as well, uh, which which helps make the deck stronger. While not being affected by it yourself. That's absolutely <laughs> the, operative, the, the operative bit, is that when your opponent plays their turn two Ursula, when they play bare necessities, which they will, because those cards are incredibly good for the reasons you stated, uh, you get to just go, sure, take a look. Yeah. And take nothing. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah, I, I like that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right well got to just, just briefly reflect that i i also think ruby is looking really good it was the first thing i started testing but to give a different answer for my sins i am a control player at heart i'm sorry i picked it before i knew it was good i swear but yeah so like 
for my sins, I do like control, but I recently started playing with um, red blue locations, which I, I've mentioned to you. It's, we still need to see how the meta solves. It needs to face Ruby Amethyst a few times to see if it's really a contender, but I'm really enjoying it. Locations are such a prominent thing that, like you say, we don't have a be prepared for locations. We don't have a grab your swords for locations. We're hard removal like Hades, Maleficent, things like that. Locations do not care. So if you can get a situation where you clear your opponent's board and you get three locations down, you're pretty set. The only thing that can really start upsetting your tempo is opposing Maui's. So they're going to be really important cards to like watch when you're playing them. And I actually think it, if locations do end up being good enough as a whole, it turns decks it like more decks have to put more of an emphasis on big beat sticks so and more rush characters perhaps just to be able to remove them immediately. Um, so yeah, red blue locations is one that I'm looking out for. But I'm a control guy. I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm a villain. It's the <laughs> clues in the name. <laughs> All right, Favel. Well, I, the, the thing that uh, fascinated me for Wurkana was some of the green effects that was, were spoiled before the release of the game. So the moment I saw Free Rider, the two costs that force your opponent to discard a card, I was, okay, this is my game because I love strategies where you force your opponent to make a mistake and make a decision and make it wrong. And that's why Emerald is very dear to my heart and I wanted to make it work for two sets, but we all know that Emerald was nowhere to be seen. And now Emerald got all the fancy stuff, but at the same time, I'm not a fan of uh, single card decks, that decks that rely on a single card, like Ursula. Ursula is great, but yeah. if you don't draw it, you are, yeah, yeah it's bad. So I'll for sure play Emerald. Not sure what I will mix it with. Probably Steel makes more most sense. Yeah. But Emerald plus Sapphire or War Steel. This is the thing that I'm mostly looking to. And finally, Emerald will be competitive, even without Ursula. The other, the three cost Ursula, of course. The other tools that they got, Emerald, is good enough to make it competitive for finally. So I'm very excited for that. And some card draw, striking yeah. the match. Finally, some card draw. So, yeah, great. And inkable card. An inkable card draw. Yeah. What is this world? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, th th this is a super short podcast, so that's basically the main things that uh, we're going to talk about. But before we leave, let's uh, let's ask uh, our fellow guests uh, today. Um, what are you, your favorite three top three cards that you guys love from this set? Else, like, I, I'll, I'll let you guys think yeah, yeah, and I'm, yeah. I'll answer first yeah. Yeah. Okay. shall we all agree that Bear Necessities <laughs> is everyone's favorite that, that's yeah. honorable pick has a honorable pick the Bear okay. yeah. honorable the pick yeah. okay so we can pick that because I was going to pick that <laughs> <laughs> that's our group decision yes. <laughs> alright uh, for me number one would probably be John Silver I, I really like how John Silver works I really like as well how it encourages you to play locations it makes the game fun for me because it's a it's it's a new thing that, that we have. Um, it's something to explore. And then I also like Kida. I know people are disagreeing a lot with Kida, but on an aggro deck, I love the, the way she protects everything. I, I put down four creatures and then I play Kida and they can't remove anything. I, I, I love that. And lastly, Robin Hood. Robin Hood is such a good card. I feel like it's like the sad beast of set three where you can run it with different steel decks and it's gonna do not the best, but always decent or good. The, the good thing about Kida as well is that she fills two roles. So we have the, the steel two cost, which is a Simba, but then we, so that fills that role, but then we also have the flirt shift target to sing our songs. So you sort of like, by putting those in, you save yourself a spot. So yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, I just want to jump in on Kida really quick because um, it's going to be one of my picks. So I'll pick something else now. Yeah. But um, I was playing it in a locations-based list, so a Ruby, a Ruby Amber locations. And like you were saying, so good for protecting your board of aggressive characters. The same goes for locations. If you can present that board of, here are some aggressive characters, plus one or two good locations, they really can't do anything against that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really incredibly powerful in that All spot. Right.
Um, yeah, you can pick that as one of your favorites. That's totally fine. You know, um, I don't want to like take up because I said like some good cards, especially Robin Hood. You know, yeah, <laughs> sure. So, like, I don't want to take that away from you guys. Uh, you want to go ahead on this? One? Yeah. Um, so yeah, maybe this is a cop out answer, but the two drop Ursula for me is just so incredibly versatile because. Like with Bare Necessities, obviously it takes more things away. You've got more options. You can take items. You're not just constrained to just songs. You can take locations. Very relevant. Um, but with Ursula, you are getting the body that stays around. So the floor is way lower. Sometimes you'll play Bare Necessities against the Mufasa deck and get nothing. But with Ursula, the floor is there. Um, I think that all of the songs are so powerful. You're probably hitting stuff most of the time. Uh, she's just a slam dunk. And Inkable as well. It's just... <laughs> Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, one more. Oh. Makita, uh, Ursula, one more. Uh, Queen's Castle. Queen's Castle goes for me as, as the pick of the locations. I love RLS Legacy as well, but it's a, yeah. it, it fills a different role. Um, but Queen's Castle, when you, when you find the right spot, when you get used to playing with locations and you find that, you are sort of taking a turn off a lot of the time to play one, but when you find the spot with it and send a couple characters there right away, yeah. Uh, you will, you remember that and you keep playing it again and again. You don't <laughs> take that feels card. Good card. You don't take that card out of your deck after you've done that. <laughs> well, for me as a Memorot fanboy, I would also say uh, the two cost Ursula and then Morph. I think Morph yeah. also changes the game a yes. lot, makes a lot better decks more consistent as a shiftable target. And yeah, of course the true drop Ursula. The three cards, those are the three cards for me that make Emerald stand out and I'm happy with yeah. And honorable mention to the ships, the, the Ruby ships. Uh, I think Johnny Roger in the RLS. Yeah, they, they will also add uh, a lot of cool interactions in the game. And I'm excited for that too. So. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Uh, Lastly? Yeah, so... I have to echo Silver. I just think that's such a... I, I mean, I like the character, but I think it's so good. Um, it might be the crutch that pirates keep themselves standing on um, because it can just provide so much value, like with, like gaining resist, gaining lore. You can make some... like You really go aggressive when you're getting down with locations. So I have to echo that. Um, I think Medusa is one I want to put a highlight on. When she was first released, I saw particular social media site that will go unnamed um absolutely slating it so like budget tremaine this is awful what without a shift up like without being a floodborne and i just don't think people realize just how many viable targets have three strength or less there's an assumption that three strength means bad but i mean like Beast is the first thing to, to come to mind as like a target and the list goes I made a whole like because it was annoying me how many people were like not respecting it I made a whole spreadsheet like by the way these are all your Medusa targets and then a couple of people coming like well when you put it like that like, so I, I have to highlight Medusa and although it may be that she ends up dropping because as a response to her, people just like stop playing as many counts. And like Ursula just gets cut from Ruby Amethyst until Medusa drops off. Um, so yeah, I think I think that's a one to definitely highlight. And not so much as a big broken gonna rule the format cards. I have to mention Jafar. I have to be that guy. Um, I, I think it's fine. I think it, like in some ways it can feel really underwhelming at times. Like don't get me wrong, if you can achieve turn five shift Jafar and whole new world that jump can just be enough to just secure it um but obviously people are prepared for it it's very telegraphable so i think it's very it, it will be dealt with but i still think it's going to have a place because just because i'm telegraphing it doesn't mean you're always going to have the answer to it and even if you do like my first Jafar deck i was like well let's just maximize two drop Jafar, three drop Jafar, four drop Jafar. If have you got an answer for it turns two three and four it doesn't matter if you know it's coming I'm doing it anyway so I don't think he's going to dominate but I think he is going to have a place and I think the trick with Jafar is don't build your deck saying this is all around Jafar build your control deck and or your um, or your Amethyst uh, steel deck and just have him as an extra option that you can use because there's reason to play the baby Jafar anyway while we have evasive so yeah those would be my mentions for sure I just wanted to add uh, on that you heard that folks Jafar he loves it. I love Jafar as well. But since it's his favorite, I have three Jafars. Let's trade with your Robin Hood. 
<laughs> I, I did put a Robin Hood in my last in my last participation. Plan. I'm just kidding. But uh, first of all, I just want to thank everyone here for for, for coming and doing this. Uh, I think this is something that the the community would enjoy. Actually, just this uh, Pavel's idea. Um, we're like, hey, we're going to this uh, event. Why don't we do a live podcast for everyone where we actually sit down together and talk about the Lorcan app? We have a screen and, and we have a question or whatever we speak. Dark Sphere. Yeah, right. Big yeah. shout out to Dark Sphere as well for letting us do this yeah, in, in, in the shop. They dedicated a spot for us and it's such a busy place for them to like give us a spot for Lorcan to do this. And so, so. Big thanks, uh, Dark Sphere. Yeah, do you guys want to say something uh, to everyone really quick? Uh, just thanks for having us, man. It's great fun to talk and uh, really good fun to be here. So, yeah, thanks for letting me get involved. Awesome. Yeah. Make sure you are subscribed to Omeister, man, is, as well as doing depth profiles, is doing interviews with people in the community, uh, which I've watched most of them. They're really interesting to, like, uh, see the insights. Um, so, yeah, make sure you subscribe to Earl. Uh, make sure you support in Lukana Decklist and Pavel. And Their just, links are going to be down below. And just thank you to the community, which by and large just seems really awesome like so massive props yeah thank you and and their links all of them are going to be down below so make sure you subscribe do all that show them some love and check out their content because they're all awesome be happy should we do like some sign out like power rangers like all right, go. go. Look on a go. <laughs> Let's go, baby. I'll see you guys later. Nice, <laughs> oh, right. cool. Thank you so much. Don't forget your hamster, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I caught myself.